Welcome into Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader. Let me go ahead. Actually, I think. Are you seeing this notification on uh, on your Twitter feed? Uh, because I think I might need to add it in. Uh, if not, let me see here. Uh, I want to because I'm testing it off a new uh, iPad. Is it showing up on the uh, on the Twitter feed? Uh, if it's showing up on the Twitter feed, let me know. That's a good sign. I'm checking myself to confirm. Yes. Okay. We are off and running. Uh, I appreciate all of you. Uh, I am down in Florida. Uh, I'm in uh, our Florida place here. If I can keep this from uh, from tilting down here in a second. All right. There we go. Uh, appreciate all of you hanging out with me. We got a lot to get to. Uh, and I want to run through so many different angles. Uh, of this, uh, of the, the different stories that are going on. Uh, we're going to talk about the coronavirus, Earl Thomas, Major League Baseball working to come back, SEC schools announcing fall plans for school uh, and what that means, college football, uh, partial return. I agree with James Franklin. It is okay. A woman was eaten uh, by an alligator. Her final words were, I don't look like a deer after being told that it had eaten a deer. Uh, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson set to golf uh, in uh, the next couple of weekends. Billy Plan, all of that on the uh, on the equation. But we begin here. Uh, all right, I want to give you some details uh, that I saw from the state of Tennessee. First of all, for everybody in Nashville, Nashville is opening up, uh, or in the area, Nashville is going to open up uh, on uh, on Monday. And so the whole state of Tennessee will be open. I have now eaten in restaurants in Florida for the past three nights. It has been fantastic. I went to George's in Alice Beach last night. Uh, The previous night, uh, we went out to uh, we went out to Papa Joe's, and uh, and we also went out. Where else did we go? I can't even remember all the different places we've been already. Three straight nights out to a restaurant. It has been fantastic. Zero complaints for me, all right? So these are some data points on the coronavirus from uh, the state of Tennessee. 586 prisoners in Bledsoe County, which is a part of Tennessee, tested positive in a prison for coronavirus. 580 of them never showed any symptoms, completed quarantine, and have been allowed back out into regular circulation. Two of them were hospitalized. Four are still in quarantine. All right, I want to repeat this. 586 test positive in a prison. 580 of them never show any symptoms. Only two of them were hospitalized. Zero deaths, all right? Zero deaths at all. I also then said, you know what? I'm kind of curious. Yeah, I went to La Cochina. I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, I was also kind of curious. I sat back and I said, man, you know what? I want to look and see what the data is in the state of Tennessee because I haven't heard anybody talk about this. This is the state that I live in, although I'm down in Florida right now. Uh, And I said, you know, they shut down Nashville, though Nashville is now opening back up. There are three people that have died of the coronavirus in the state of Tennessee who are 30 or younger. Three. Three. Three people, 30 or younger, have died in the entire state, nearly 7 million people in Tennessee who are 30 or younger. 12 people have died between the ages of 31 and 50, all right? So, 15 total people under the age of 50 have died in the state of Tennessee since the coronavirus outbreak started. 15. If you remember the tornado that came through Tennessee killed 25 people, all right? This is not a deadly virus, by and large, for the vast majority of people who get it. And by the way, 18 people between the age of 51 and 60, the average person in Tennessee who is dying is over, over the average age of death in the country, okay? So this is the truth. I'm trying to give you actual data. In conjunction with this data, 33 million people have now lost their jobs in the state uh, of Tennessee and the remaining other 49 states in the United States. We have created the Great Depression voluntarily in the space of less than two months. Never before have we ever seen anything the likes of this in the history of the nation. 
I want you to think about this for a minute. We're talking about 33 million unemployed people. That's one in five of every person that had a job has lost their jobs right now over this decision. It's time to go back to work. Every state needs to be opened up. Every state needs to be opened up and everybody needs to be able to go back to work. I believe, I believe that when we finish 2020, you will not be able to see a difference in the total difference in the uh, death rate in 2020 before 2019, 2018, 2017. It's going to be almost exactly the same, right? We're not even going to be able to tell that the coronavirus existed is my prediction because 7,500 people die every day in this country and also because 2.8 million people 2.8 million people all right, are right now breaking down and looking at deaths every single year. So when you actually look at it I don't believe that there is likely to be any substantial change. We got to look at the data and make smart decisions about what we're doing. Uh, All right, Earl Thomas. This was the story that everybody needed. Earl Thomas, if you haven't heard this story, TMZ reported based off of police reports in Austin, Texas, that Earl Thomas got into a fight with his wife over, uh, over his drinking. Maybe a lot of people out there fighting with their spouses over how much they're drinking during the quarantine. He was upset and Earl Thomas decided to bail on the house. Where did he go? He went to an Airbnb, all right? He went to an Airbnb where he met up with his brother and two other women. His wife then went into his Snapchat account, saw who he was messaging with, figured out where he was, and showed up at the Airbnb. When she arrived, I don't know why they didn't lock the door, when she arrived, walked right in, walked right into the house, and right then and there, she found him in bed with his brother and two naked women. She didn't just, Nina Thomas, his wife, she didn't just roll in, okay? She didn't just roll in there She rolled in there with two other women, one of whom had a butcher knife, and the other thing was she was carrying his gun. And she thought she had taken out the bullets, but there was still a chamber there. There was no safety at all on the gun. And so she put the gun to his head, while before that she had had walked in and said, and I quote, I got something for all you hoes. So we got the girl here, Nina Thomas, Earl Thomas's wife, walks in with a gun, says, I got something for all you hoes, puts the gun to her husband's head, and evidently all of this is on video because one of the naked women thought, not when somebody comes running in with a gun, oh my God, we're going to get shot. They thought to themselves, I got to get my phone and make sure we don't miss any of this so it's actually been recorded. It's actually been recorded. Now, then Earl Thomas finds out later, by the way, after he disarms her, she then is outside chasing him around with a butcher knife when the uh, Austin, Texas police show up. Earl Thomas decides to address it and he says, and I quote, Stuff like this happens, bro. It pisses me off that it got out, but it's the world we live in today. First of all, stuff like this happens, bro. I don't know about you, but I don't think most people have sex with women while next to their brother and then have their wife show up with a gun screaming, I got something for all you hoes, putting it to their head and then chasing them with a butcher knife. Maybe that happens regularly. I just don't know. Okay? He then said, it pisses me off that it got out, but it's the world we live in today. It's the world we live in today? No, it's not the world we live in today. This when the police are called because your wife is trying to stab you to death with a butcher knife. 
It's, it pisses me off that it got out. Dude, the police came and saved your life. Uh, I got something for all you hoes is one of the greatest lines of all time. Stuff like this happens, bro. Earl Thomas. Hook him. Hook him for Earl Thomas. Uh, so that is uh, my thoughts on Earl Thomas in general. Major League Baseball is coming back according to a report from ESPN. They are working on the return of baseball. They would go to a second spring training in June and try to start by July 1. That would be pretty outstanding to be able to see it all get back in baseball. I got to give baseball credit for trying to make this happen. And I want to give Scott Boris credit because Scott Boris said what many more people should be saying, what I just started off this show talking about, people are not in danger who are young and healthy from the coronavirus. He finally came out and said it. Major League Baseball players aren't, NBA players aren't in danger. College kids aren't in danger. This is not really in any way, in any way, a remote danger for the players, okay? So we need to get sports back and get them back sooner rather than later. All right, the SEC states. I've been saying straightforward. The SEC is going to play football this year. Tennessee, South Carolina, Georgia, LSU, Alabama, Kentucky, Arkansas, Texas A&M, almost every school in the SEC has already announced that they are returning for the fall, as they should be. The SEC is going to play college football. They are going to. The schools that have not announced so far, Vanderbilt, they have not announced at Florida, and they haven't announced at Ole Miss and Mississippi State. The other 10 schools have all announced, yes, Missouri counts. And so, we are going to be playing, all right? Now, this turned into a controversy because James Franklin came out and said, we don't have to wait on every school to be able to play in order for us to play, okay? And so, uh, this is interesting. I I agree with this. If Vanderbilt doesn't want to play SEC football, they don't have to play. The other 13 schools can play. If Boston College doesn't want to play in the ACC, the rest of the ACC shouldn't be held hostage by them. If Rutgers, if New York City does not want to play in the Big Ten, why should Ohio State, Michigan, or Penn State not play? Everyone should not have to play in a conference in order for the conference to play. And every athlete shouldn't have to play either. If you're afraid to play football, you don't have to play. If you want to stay at home and not go to school this year, if you don't want to go to work, you don't have to go to work. You have the right to stay home. The rest of us who are young and healthy would like to be able to go back to work. Period. And so if one school doesn't want to play, then you don't have to play. If the state of California decides that they don't want to play college football this year, then you shouldn't be held hostage by the state of California not wanting to play, okay? The majority should rule, and if the majority wants to play, they should be able to play. This is no-brainer to me. I can't believe this is considered to be controversial. Uh, Speaking of sports coming back, we got Peyton Manning and Tom Brady going to play golf with Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson down in Florida. That should be pretty outstanding. We previously reported this at OutKick. It's going to be taking place on Memorial Day weekend, the Sunday before Memorial Day. It's going to be free on TNT. We reported this at OutKick last week. Should be outstandingly huge audience of people that will be interested in watching. And it is going to be a lot of fun. They had a great video that we're going to try to splice in here maybe as part of the short videos that we will share of Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson all talking about the match and Peyton Manning was absolutely hysterical while talking about it. He said that Tom Brady couldn't leave Florida because he had a breaking and entering violation uh, with going into the house, uh, the wrong house in Tampa. So I think that this is going to be outstanding. A lot of people are going to be watching. Credit to Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, to Phil Mickelson, and to Tiger Woods. Jim Harbaugh came out with an He said that he believes college football players should be able to go pro 
at any point in time that they would like. And that in addition to being able to go pro at any point in time that they like, if they're not drafted or don't sign as free agents, they should be able to return and get back to being college eligible. I've criticized a lot of what Jim Harbaugh has said over the years because some of it's nonsensical. This is almost exactly what I've been arguing. I think that the perfect model is college baseball. All right? Uh, And so if guys decide that they want to go pro one time, they should be able to enter their name in the draft. And if they don't get drafted, they can come back. If they do get drafted, then they go pro and their eligibility is extinguished. To me, this makes an awful lot of sense. Uh, Football is a brutal sport on your body. And if you have the opportunity to go pro, you should be able to do it. I said this from the moment that I saw Marcus Lattimore get injured. Some people say, do you ever change your mind? Marcus Lattimore was ready to go pro. South Carolina running back after his freshman year. His sophomore year, he told it tore up his knee. His junior year, he tore up his other knee. He never played pro football. Never made a dollar to play pro football. I'm not saying he has to go pro, but after his freshman year, he was ready and he was able. People always say, well, somebody just said in the comments, well, there's not a lot of 18 and 19-year-old kids that are ready to go pro. So what? We let 18 and 19-year-old kids walk around in foreign countries with guns getting shot at. And people don't even blink. If you go pro and you're not ready and you fail as a pro, your life is going to be fine. You have the right to take a risk to potentially make more money for yourself by leaving. It isn't It isn't a function or a reality that you are somehow a failure if your college career gets cut short and if you don't become an NFL player. A lot of people are going to fail. The data reflects that the people who fail the most in the entirety of the uh, in the entirety of the NBA, for instance, are four-year seniors compared to high school. People go, and you will be able to make the right decision whether you want to or not. All right, this is beyond a shadow of a doubt the right call. I give credit to Jim Harbaugh for the college eligibility plan. Uh, all right, finally, a woman in uh, a woman in uh, South Carolina was killed was killed by an alligator. She walked down to the alligator. She was messing around with it. A man ran outside and said, and I quote, uh, look out, I'm not quoting directly, but she said, alligator just killed a deer. All right? And when the alligator killed, uh, had killed the deer, the woman said, and I quote, I don't look like a deer. I don't look like a deer, she said, upon which time the alligator bought, bit her, dragged her into the water, and ate her. One of the all-time worst comments to have your life end on was, I don't look like a deer. And then, while she was dragged into the water, she said, I won't be doing this again. And then there was a gator roll, and she was dead. This happened in South Carolina. Uh, the, The story is unbelievable. I don't look like a deer. She then gets attacked by the alligator. She said, I won't be doing this again. And that is the end of the story. She was gone. Animal Thunderdome, indeed. Uh, All right, I hit everything I believe here. I appreciate all of you. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. I appreciate you. Uh, DBAP, unless you need to SBAP. One of the dumbest lines from a woman of all time. Nowhere near as good as, I got something for all you hoes. Earl Thomas Scott uh, style. Love you. Kisses. DBAP, unless you need to SBAP. I'm Clay Travis. I'm headed out to the beach. I'll see you guys.